look as we ask in you, Lord God, touch the bodies of your people, touch the minds of your people, touch the hearts of your people. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father, for the gift for our men of God, for your place in our life. Father, we're asking you, Lord God, that you use him tonight as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God, to speak your word in simplicity, Lord God, and clarity, Lord God, to proclaim the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So use him tonight, Lord God, string him, Lord God, empower the wisdom, knowledge, Lord God, that that be in part in our spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Well, before the pastor is coming, I would like to make a couple announcements. One of the announcements, this coming Saturday, we have a coming in annual church picnic. So we believe that we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. And those who don't receive the flyers yet, we have a, a flyers all the way in the back. Welcome to um, get one or share with some neighbors, friends. It's not just for the church members, it's also for some of your family members, maybe some of your neighbors and friends. And why? You know, sometimes people don't want to come to church, but they sure enough go somewhere and fellowship in a and the nature, and uh, we'll be happy to fellowship somewhere. So you invite people, invite your neighbor, invite your friends, invite your um, relatives to come and fellowship with us this coming Saturday. And we have an address, and also we posted the announcement, that announcement on our website, so welcome to check out on the website. You have exactly address. And you just Google it and see how to get there. Very easy. Um, so <clears throat> this is one of the things what we do in as the ministry as the church annual ch uh, church picnic. Um, also, yeah, and I want to mention regarding that on August 10. Usually, um, we have Saturday evening. We usually have a prayer evening. Pastor is teaching and prayer. We do pray. And Saturday evenings and but this Saturday evening we're not gonna have a service uh, in that evening over here we will have a service at the park so we just still have a service but in different location it's gonna be because more like a outreach because you will notice that it's gonna be a people there who will just pass by or who will just you know um, stop by and, and we'll um, hear, we'll have opportunity to hear the gospel. So, so this is a, one of the things we um, usually do at least once a year for the church picnic. So we not just go fellowship, but we also try to reach the souls. And we not just try to reach the souls, we are reaching them. A lot of us just talk and communicate with people who we meet at the park and sharing the good news because we do have a good news and this good news is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for those who are sick don't have to be sick anymore for those who is lost they don't have to be lost anymore because Jesus Christ he is here to deliver to set the captive free and the power that we have and the news and the word that we have we must share that with someone else Hallelujah. That is, that is the one of the missions. The Lord is telling us, go to all the world and preach the gospel. And this is what we have to do. It's not just for the pastor. It's not just for the evangelist. It's for all of us. Those who is the a household of the believers, a household of God, a church. We are the church. We are all of us. We are ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us. Even you're not a fivefold ministry, but you're still a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, another thing I want to share with you, that God 
is raising up this ministry and it's a process we are still a new in a block <laughs> we're gonna be a four years old and it's gonna be this coming November and we will celebrate this time because it's a it's a I mean that is a, such a privilege and honor what God is um, doing for this ministry like I was share with you prior we have a lot of testimonies and people just say thank you and we obviously point back to the Lord we just say thank God that he is using his vessel so now pastor have uh, some opportunities um, some doors is open some ministry outside of the United States contacting him and um, a lot of people invite him to come and you know because something God is imparting in him and it's not just for the local church a local city or state it's um, he has this mantle special mantle it's we truly blessed because he is carrying the apostolic anointing on him which is and we know that those who carry the apostolic anointing is operating a fivefold ministry gifts which is in any um, point of order. So God is placing a lot of open doors in him. So he pastor in prayer. Uh, because for everything is time and season we know that and that he will move in his time and God's time and season. Uh, one of the things Pastor share with you this morning, I believe, to uh, probably travel pretty soon to Nigeria, Africa. Um, we're not sure exactly for how many days, uh, but it's going to be a number of churches uh, you're going to be ministering there. So it's a truly blessing. It's how not. How many churches going to come together? Okay, well, so they're going to have a huge meeting. I guess this is what's going to happen. Is a lot of churches come together and. Um, a lot of church is going to come together, and so pastor obviously um, aware of the legal protocol that he has to take uh, to travel overseas. So that obviously is not his first time, and he been overseas, you know, before. So we thank God for this opportunity, and like um, God giving opportunity to all men of God, and I believe with all of our my heart and pastor's heart that God will give us all opportunities. Some of us might not gonna travel to Africa or India like Pastor being in, in, in India and some other uh, places, but we still in a mission. God can open us a door wherever we live, wherever we, um, you know, have a business or working place position. This is our mission. And when we go someplace, when I just appear there, it was like, okay, Lord, how you want me to be used by you here? Sometimes, you know, he can open a door for you to minister in someone. Sometimes you just have to show your life, you know, your attitude. Um, because the Holy Spirit is the one who working in the heart of the people. We cannot make someone saved as far as the you know as far as the win of the Jesus. Christ is the one who brings the salvation through the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when God speaks or wants to speak for you, we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and better to speak when he said to speak. So this is the one of the announcements um, we have. So also uh, we do have um, evenings of prayer well obviously we also have a morning of prayers and so uh some of us here very faithfully and uh coming every morning and usually it's 8 30 in the morning uh some of us come you know later but someone is really really here every day 8 30 in the morning faithfully praying so god is answering in prayer because without the prayer, you cannot have a breakthrough in our life. And it's something is different when we pray corporately. Something is different when we pray corporately. Because 
I understand all of us praying. Well, and those who don't know how to pray, this is the one of the opportunities to learn how to pray. When I was a young Christian, young believer, this is where I learned how to pray, do, uh, attending to the morning prayers. It's a different forms of prayer. Some prayers you talk to God personal needs and you know share with him whatever your needs would like he don't know he already know but it's a different forms of prayer some prayers is the proclamation prayers and some prayers the warfare prayers and when the believers is come together as I have a corporate anointing and you can bombard the spirit realm with a corporate anointing can you believe when you pray in a spirit for example and you have that power because it says, Great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. And just one person have a power. But when we come together and start to pr together to pray in the spirit and pray in an understanding, something is something can break in the spirit realm. You know, and so this is very important to understand, you know, to have this prayer together. And also in one accord. So we design some books we have in the back. When we come here for the corporate prayer, we're not praying just your personal little needs, which is very important to God also, but we do pray the corporately. We have a specific prayers and everything is based on the word of God and we pray this prayer. If you don't confess this prayer, Pray just in the spirit, but still pray corporately because that's important to pray corporately because you are released the power of God. The word of God declare, submit to God and resist the devil. When we come to God, what we do? We submit to him, right? I mean, that is the humble because see, the flesh is always wants to do what flesh wants to do. How many of you like to sleep in the morning? Right? Well, it's comfortable. You know, flesh never want to probably even work. But, you know, the scripture says, who don't work, they don't eat. I mean, just get that. <laughs> really. Don't look for the free ride. And, I mean, you don't need to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with you because even when people go in a, some of you familiar, when they go in an older age, you know, they age it, whatever. You know, when they stop doing something, they, they start to decompensate it. They start to like losing the hope, what I'm here for. I mean, a lot of people, they look forward to retirement. Oh, I can't wait. I have retirement in two years. And when they got retired from their position, they was like, what am I doing now? You know what I'm saying? So. What, what I'm saying, even maybe you're not working, don't get lazy. Still do something. Fix your grandson a socks or something. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, learn knitting. Do something with your hands. Activate your brain. You know, that if you don't use that, that can have problem there. You know, like uh, uh, what the doctor says I have years ago, I have a... Uh, um, injury with my shoulder and years ago I have a sometimes problem to use that shoulder and so what the physician was saying you know what if you're not using it you will lose that that capa uh, capa um, capacity. capacity to function properly well the same thing with the brain our brain is designed to think to read the word to learn, you know, we have a um, a lot of people who is like um, wants to hunger for learning, and not just the spiritual things, the things how to function and desert. And we have to learn. We have to be hungry for knowing things. And the Holy Spirit will direct us and lead us to do what He calls us to do. All right. So anyway, I wanted to pray right now for those who is watching. This broadcast, maybe for those also who is here, because if the Lord 
present this to us today, we have to grab it and live with. That we have to continue to present in with a purpose. To have that activities in our life, not to live in an imagination world, be realistic in God, because God is a realistic God, and He will lead us, He will direct us, and most of all, He will use us in this earth. Hallelujah. That we will not um, praise the Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for everyone, Father, who is watching this broadcast tonight. We thank you, Father, also, Lord, for those who is here this evening, and those who are still in the way. We ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, open your people's eyes of understanding, because you have a purpose for every person, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you activate that purpose. You activate that ability. You activate, Father, all the fruits and the gifts, Father, that you already in place in people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That would be produ uh, producers, Father, fr fr uh, fruit producers, Father, for your kingdom, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we take authority right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak every spirit, what is not of God, try to hold your people in bondage in the name of Jesus. And we break for the blood of Jesus and the word of the living God. We thank you, Father, that your people will continue to go forward. We bind, we break that spirit of laziness, that spirit from the pits of hell. We break off of God's people in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that your people... Be a fruit producers in this earth. We thank you, Lord God, because the power they operate is great is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And as they submit to you, and they will resist the devil, and he has to flee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we are men and women of prayer, that we be intercessors for the kingdom of the living God. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Continue to use each of us, Lord God, on this earth for your kingdom, for your glory. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. Well, this is what it is. And the uh, pastor is coming and he will minister into, uh, to each of us this evening. Amen. 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 Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. How is everyone doing today? Blessed of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. It is an honor to be with you once again to bring to you the living word of God. Hallelujah. You know, it is a good thing to be a child of God in these last days. It is a good thing. When we look at what's going on in the world, when we look at how the, the people are turning away from, uh, trying to turn the people away from God, we know that we're in a time that is very, very terrible for the world. Because God is not going to be mocked, and people are not going to override God's authority. Amen. You know, I was just checking out something on the internet before I came to church tonight. And I was looking at a, 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 what, a super breed of cows. <laughs> yeah, hybrid cows. These cows, well, they, oh my God, look like monsters rather than cows. And I, and I tell you, that kind of got my attention. Red meat. <laughs> so we uh, we better be thinking twice on some of the stuff we are putting in our system. Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm going to check it out when I go back on the line. Then I and I and I and I I'll share it so people can see what I'm talking about. But it's not something that we want to 
we are part of. And it's all about science. Science is trying to make huh? They're trying to be smart. Yeah, they, they're trying to they try to outwit God, and that is not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Amen. You see these hybrid watermelons that we eat with no seeds? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Oh, they taste good. <laughs> but it's not natural. Yeah. The natural watermelon, they have seeds. How can you take a woman that don't have seed and reduplicate it? You can't. <laughs> Amen. So you can't duplicate something that you can't get a seed out of. Amen. So that showed me that it's not a natural. That's not a natural uh, thing. Amen. And so this is this is why I'm telling you, we are in the last days, folks, and. And, and we're going to see a lot more things coming up on us, and we got to be ready to face these things knowing the truth. Because it's the truth that's going to make you free. Amen? And untruth can bring you into deep bondage. Amen? But the truth is going to make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, that's what this is what we're facing. And right now, I'll uh, our musician is still on the road traveling, so we're going to uh, just sing a song tonight. We're going to sing a song tonight. And, uh, you know, and what I want to say to you all is just thank you. Amen. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Because, you see, you guys are, are faithful of the crew. You're sticking with the, with the, with the call of God. You're, you're hanging in there. Amen. And, and God is just... And God, you know, God is keeping us. You know, we've been in, this is our, what, November be four years. November be four years. And let me tell you something. That the reason I know that we're on the, we're on the, the, the right path and that we do what God's called us to do, we never had to beg nobody for nothing. Amen? We may not have all the people, we may not have all the finances that other churches have. Amen? But we have never had to beg for nothing. Amen. God has been our source. And God has continually blessed you people. So you can continue to be a blessing to the church. And you know, that's, a, that's wonderful. Because we see the hand of God moving in our midst. And I think that is very, very good. Amen. Now, now, my wife, she was sharing with you about some, about some things that the Lord has been dealing with my heart about. Uh, you see, before I became a pastor, I was an evangelist and missionary worker. And, and I was traveling to different countries, uh, carrying the gospel, and throughout America. And so, God has been dealing with my heart lately, especially when he spoke to my heart and said, build me an army. You know, and I've been and I've been I've been thinking, Lord, uh, we don't have a, a whole lot to deal with right now. But he didn't say he didn't say nothing to me about it. He just told me what he expected me to build my army. I'm in the bathroom shaving, then all of a sudden I hear God speak to me in the spirit in my heart. He said, "Build me an army." And I said, "Honey, did you hear that?" <laughs> I asked my wife, she was in there, she was back in the bedroom too. I said, honey, did you hear that? And she said, no, what? I said, God just spoke to me. She said, what did he say? He said, he told me the same thing he told Dr. Cirillo. Build me an army. Oh, and you know, and that's when we started teaching this uh, school of ministry on Tuesday nights. That's when we started, that's when we launched this class on Tuesday night, this school of ministry. When God, I, you know, I had it for a long time before I even used it. It's sitting there under my desk in my office at home. At home, And I just, you know, I went through there once I just looked at stuff. I said, oh, Lord, when are we going to use this? And that day when God spoke to my heart, I knew it was time to pull it out and start teaching it to prepare you. Because, you see, what God is leading, is what God is building us up for is for the hurting people. How can you minister to someone that is hurting 
if you have not been ministered to yourself or you don't have the knowledge on how to minister to them. Amen. And so this is what this class is all about, equipping you to carry out the Great Commission. You may not be the one that goes to Africa. You may not be the one to go to India. You may not be the one to go to China. But you can be the one to assist the one that God is telling to go. Amen. Amen. And so God has been doing my heart about this. And so now he's get, now I'm getting ready to go back into the, the foreign lands again. You know, I, just, I was just at home today. And there was this ministry, another ministry over in Pakistan. And he said, "Please, I want to be a, I want to be a part of your ministry. Would you please establish one of your churches in my country?" Wow. That's what he just. This was just today. Mm-hmm. And he said, "I want you and and, and, and your and pastor. I want you and your pa- and your wife to come and visit us and and minister to our people." Wow. This was just today. Amen. Amen. God is doing something, and we got to be ready to do what God is asking of us. And it's going to take all of us. It's, it's going to take all of our efforts, not just one man, not just me and my wife. It's going to take us as a church family. Amen. Amen. It's going to take us as a church family. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to go to the nations tomorrow, but I might be going next month. That early. That early. Okay? We already started to check on the information that we need to go. And uh, we talked with them. We about to, we about to uh, see about the pricing of the tickets. We already checked on the pricing of the tickets. Amen? And then we got to check on the visa. Because we can't get the visa without the ticket. This is backwards to me. I never did it like that before. For this particular country, you got to have the ticket before you can even get the visa. They don't even want to talk to you if you don't have a ticket. Yeah. And, and what? Immunization. Immunization. Oh, that means I got to take some shots. <laughs> I don't like that. But I I had to take when I went to India too, though, so it, it, it's nothing. nothing. Yeah. Some of them are still doing it. Probably because they last over 10 years. Yeah. But it's been about 10 years since I... <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Uh-huh. No, uh, she's going to stay, man. She's going to stay here with the church while I'm gone. She's going to stay with the church while I'm gone. And I and I have uh, invitations right now to come to 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 come to churches here in America to hold conferences. You know, right now, but I couldn't go because she wasn't ready for me to leave her right now. She wasn't ready for me to leave her in charge. But God is telling me I got to be about His business. So that's who that's who I am. Oh yeah, she's qualified. I God has made sure she's been qualified. <laughs> God has made sure she's been qualified, and she got some good help. Yeah, got some good help. Now she got a babysitter to help her and everything too. Oh, she's gonna be fine. I'm I'm not concerned about that. That's why that's why she started promoting me and going now because she knows that God is doing my heart now. She so she knows that it's time for us to to start doing what God's called to do. See. Ministry is greater than, it's more than just here. See, when we started this church, I'm going to tell you something. Never told y'all this. When we started the church, it was, was to be a, 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 a place where we can go out, where I can go out and come back in. This was to be my church home, which, where I should be able to go out and go back in. See, I'm going, I was, I was, I was to be, the overseer of the ministry, but with someone else pastoring it. When I'm out, someone else is taking care of it. When I'm in, then I come and take care of myself. Amen. Amen. So that's where she comes in play. While I'm out, she's going to take care of the church. And when I'm back in, then I come back and release that anointing back upon you guys. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And that's what we, that's when we established this church. That's what it was all about. Uh, establishing a home base, Amen. a home base to work out of. Amen. Amen. Because before I was a pastor, I was an evangelist and a missionary, Amen. and I was going, to, I was going across, I was going across the country, everywhere, preaching and teaching, and releasing God's power. And that's why I teach so much about the power of God. Because 
It's in me to teach it. It's in me to teach it. And it, 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 and see, now you guys, when I, go, when I preach to someone else and teach someone else what I'm teaching you guys, believe me, there'll be signs, wonders, and miracles because you guys, have, you, when you first come here, you experienced it. But now you've been here so long, it's just like a secondary to you now. But for, for, but for a newcomer, they will come in and they will experience the power of God like you have never seen. Amen. Just like you were when you first came. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so this is what it's all about. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you that have been faithful to the ministry, that have supported the ministry, and those of you that have stuck with us through thick and thin. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. I see the glory of God starting to come in this place already. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Keep my way to heaven, and you will go with me. We walk upon the streets of gold, beside the crystal sea. I heard the angels singing, and someone called to me. I turned and saw this young man, and he was smiling as he came. And he said, friend, you may not know me now. Then he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school, and I was only eight. Every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. One day, when you say the prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. Remember the time a missionary came to the church, his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it away. And Jesus took that gift you made, and that's why we're here today. Somehow touched by your generosity and the things that you have done, the sacrifice was made. A notice on the earth in heaven is now the rain. I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry. But I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand. You stood before the Lord. He said, 
my job, look around you. Raise your reward. So we have tonight holy communion with God's healing power. Amen. Amen. That and the way I titled the message tonight was a welcome to the holy welcome to holy communion with God's healing power. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many you need? A, how many you need a church from heaven tonight? Do you really need a church tonight? Amen. Amen. Because I believe that we're going to get it. I believe that we're going to experience a touch from heaven. Amen. I believe we're going to experience a touch from heaven. See, healing must begin within your inner being. You must understand what God is saying to you. He not only wants you to experience healing in your flesh, in your body, but he wants you to experience healing in your innermost being. Now, when God began to deal with us in this way, he's talking about our spirit. Amen. A lot of us, we, are, we have been wounded and we've been hurt. And because of that fact, it reflects to our outward body. Our inward body experienced the hurt and the pain and then the rejection. Now, our outward body begins to express what our inward body have experienced. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Not really, huh? <laughs> Amen. Say for instance, say for instance that now that you, you, you was a, uh, you were hurt, and all of a sudden you won't not, you don't, you won't just pull away from everybody because now a spirit of pressure has come upon you because. You've been hurt. You don't want to be bothered with no one. Amen. So that is not a fleshly, a flesh and bone issue. That is a spiritual issue. I was in a spiritual issue because depression is not from God. It is from the enemy. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To preach the living to the captain, recover the sight to the blind, and to set and look to them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. See, God wants you heal spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotion. In other words, God wants to go in deep inside of your innermost area. That 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 place where He alone is abiding. 
But when we are hurt, then someone else tries to take over that area which causes more pain. Amen? So now you got to deal with the, that, that invading spirit that is trying to take the place that truly belongs to God. And now you begin to feel depressed. Oppressed. And how you said over, compress. <laughs> Suppress, compress, and depress. Amen. Now, and so the enemy, he's working overtime to bring you under his control. Amen. So we have to understand what God is saying to us. See, God's divine healing power is not just for our, it's not just for healing our physical body. Although that is a part of it. Jesus paid the price for healing for the whole person. Amen. For the whole person. Amen. 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 Now, 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 if he paid the price for the... So that means that if I walk around with unforgiveness in my heart, then that, that causes me to walk in bondage. Y'all understand? That causes me to walk in bondage because if I'm walking in unforgiveness, I'm not walking in God's nature. That leaves a door wide open for the enemy to come in to afflict me with anything he wants to because I'm not walking in the presence of God as I should. Amen. I have a door wide open for the enemy. Amen. And so we have to learn to, we have to forgive because forgive Forgive, see, if we forgive, that means we are pardoned. If we forgive, that means we are pardoned someone else's wrong. How many know that our wrong had to be pardoned by God? <laughs> so when we forgive someone, that means we are pardoned their sin. In other words, we are not holding that against them. And because we're not holding against them, that means that they can receive the benefit of God's hand resting upon them. Because if we're not going to hold it against them, then we can begin to pray for them. And as we begin to pray for them, then they're going to begin to experience liberty. They're going to begin to experience peace. That's a passive all understanding. And they're not going to understand, why am I feeling like this? I was so angry now, all of a sudden, I feel such peace. Amen. Amen. Now, it's because you did not hold that grudge against them. They might have did you wrong. They might even hurt you. They might even say some bad things towards you. But because you didn't hold it against them, now God is able to bring you to a, a higher realm in the spirit because he sees that the nature that he operates in is beginning to operate in you. And in God, there's no sicknesses. In God, there's no diseases. See, when you're drawing closer to God, you're becoming, you're becoming more pure. More, and God begins to purge you from every dead work. Amen? So you, you begin to experience God's Miracle working power simply because you show mercy on someone else. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forgiving your sins, that's dealing with the spirit. Amen. That's dealing with the spirit realm. Amen. Deliverance from physical flesh, like the, your, your flesh, you know how your flesh get all crazy sometimes and just want to act up. Amen. And see, that's dealing with the body. The, the body. Amen. Now, when we're dealing with when we when we're dealing with these areas, we know that. And when we deal, there's feelings involved with it. Amen. There's feelings, and there's the mind, the thing of the mind and emotion. See, that's me when you're dealing with feelings. That's dealing with the mind and emotion. What is that area? Soul. That's soulish realm. Amen. See, now we talk about how many how many areas of our psychological you make up just that quick. Three. We talk about three. We talk about the spirit. We talk about the 
The what? The, 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 the physical body, the flesh, and we talking about the the soulish realm. Amen. Talking about the soulish realm. See, these are the areas of us that God wants us to come clean in. Because this is an area that is always under attack. And so when we're under attack, we get wounded. When we get wounded, it may not show up on the outside all at once. But if you don't seek God for your healing, it'll show up somewhere when you really not want it to show up. Amen. So we have to be, we have to, we have to, we have to want God's spirit to be complete, to make us completely whole. We have to want God's spirit to 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 work on us, to make us completely whole. See, a lot of us say, oh God, I just thank you for healing me. I want to be more than just healed. I want to be complete. I want to be more than just healed. Because if I'm just healed, then this thing can come back later on. But if I'm made whole, then this thing is gone. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When the leper man came to Jesus and he jumped out of Jesus' feet and started worshiping him, Jesus said, he, oh, he said, oh, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus said, I will be thou cleansed. And that leprosy was gone. Amen. Why? Not because he was just healed, but because he was cleansed. Amen. God wants us to be made whole in every area of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. See, as the anointing is released within you, it will break every yoke and bondage that Satan may try to put on your bodies and mind, your emotions, your, your soulish realm. Mm -hmm. But you got to realize that you are anointed in order to release the anointing. Yeah. Because you are anointed. And you can release the anointing. And once you release the anointing, now the bondages that the enemy has brought upon you are beginning to loose their grip. Y'all need to understand what I'm saying here. Amen. Amen. Because it's the anointing that destroys you. And Satan, he tries very hard to put you in bondage in your mind, amen, your will, and your emotion. And your circumstances is going to begin to line up as you line up. Whichever way you line up, your circumstances going to line up accordingly. If you start lining up with the, with the situation that you're facing, then guess what? Those situations are going to become your main focus. But as you begin to line up with what the Word of God said concerning those situations, those situations is going to be very small concerning uh, 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 as you as you as you begin to focus on God's word, because God's word is bigger than any of the things that you will ever experience. Hallelujah. And it has the power to bring you to that full deliverance at any time that you will allow Him to do that work in your heart. The anointing will release is released within you. It will break every yoke and bondage that Satan tries to put on your body, your mind, your circumstances, there is no reason that you should ever be intimidated by the enemy. There's no reason that you should ever be intimidated by the enemy because God has made you bigger than that. Yeah. God has made you bigger than that. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 9, that's just, I'm going to turn there. I want you to turn that with me. Yeah. Romans 8, verse 9. And it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Amen. He is none of his. And that what verse 9 says? And let's look at verse number 13. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Amen. 
And now I want you to look at uh, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Oh, there he go, going through them scriptures. Yeah, I like going through the scriptures. John chapter 6, and I want you to look at verse 63. John chapter 6, and verse number 63. And it says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. See, by the spirit living within you, your body received the life giving flow of God's presence. Amen. Amen. You are no longer bound by the physical body because you are now a spiritual body. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 You see, God wants us to see. see. See, you are empowered by the dunamis working miracle power of God. That's why you must learn how to release the anointing in your life. Because when you learn to release the anointing, uh, the best way to learn how to release the anointing is start ministering to someone. Start praying for someone. Start, 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 you know, start uh, going out of your way and praying for someone that has a need greater than yours. Amen. 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 And let me tell you something. The moment you start praying for that person, you're going to begin to experience, I mean, a, a, a sensation over your, from, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And you go, uh, and you go, oh, it's going to feel so good. You just don't want to, you don't want to stop. You want to find somebody else to go pray for then. Amen. I know my wife, she, she wants, oh, I just don't, I, like, I want to disciple someone. I need someone I can disciple. That's her main objective. She wants to minister to someone. Amen. And so she, so she, uh, in time she started talking about that, it's either somebody called her or she called somebody. <laughs> and she ministered to them. Next thing you know, she walked back around the house with a smile on her face. Because she had an opportunity to release the anointing on the behalf of someone else. And what that did, that caused the burden that was rest upon her shoulder to be lifted. Amen. 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 The weight that the enemy was trying to put upon her, it caused it to be lifted. Because the anointing destroyed the yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so God wants us to begin to experience that dunamis miracle working power which he have produced in Christ's life. And it's not only produced in Christ's life, it is now residing in you. God's miracle working power is in you. It's in you. Amen. God will heal all your sicknesses and diseases. How many of you know that God is God? He is our healer. Amen. Amen. That Jesus Christ is our healer. Amen. He's Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Amen. One of his names is Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's one of God's names. Amen. Amen. This, this is his deity. This is who he is. He is our healer. He's our deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus came to destroy the works of of the devil. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John 3 and 8. For this purpose for this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. He was anointed and sent forth from God to heal all manner of, to heal all who were bound and oppressed by Satan. Amen. Amen. And guess what? God wants you to go and minister to those that have been oppressed. You know when you walk around, you see people that have to go to these psychiatrists up here, upstairs, and wherever else they go. <laughs> they go and, and, and they go and they go and they take these that they prescribe them these pills and stuff to to calm them down. You know, they're not but, but a demon spirit that, they, that they're dealing with. They don't even realize that. Amen. They're not but a demon spirit. A spirit of oppression. A spirit of depression. 
A spirit of possession. Yes, that's exactly right. Amen. And so the way they calm these people down that have these spirits is to feed them full of drugs. And it's a wonder they still alive taking those drugs. But that demon spirit that's in them is still controlling them. How many of you know somebody like that? I do too. And you know what I would love to see? I would love to see every person like that just get free so they can have an opportunity to see how good God really is. Amen. But most of them don't want to be free. They like taking drugs because they like taking the government money. <laughs> they don't want to be free, so they they, they like take they like the, the government money. They like getting money for nothing. Yeah, and this is why they this is why they yielded this way. This is why they yielded to the demon spirit. And this is why they start going to the psychiatrist and let them shock their heads. Well, yes, that's what happened. They let them shock their heads so they can be declared as in uncon what incompetent. And, and, and before you know it, they begin to act out the character that they were just planning to, plan to be. They were just playing at first. But when they when they begin to pop that electrical shock through the hands and everything, and then don't forget when they sign over their rights. When they de when they de when they sign over the rights and declare. See, they're going to make sure that you understand what you're signing. If you're going to get the government, they're going to make sure that you understand what you're signing. And the moment you agree to it, guess what? You just open up the door. You just open up the door from your agreement for the enemy to come in and have your, have your pancakes, your bacon, and your eggs. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, uh, and it all because you didn't want to didn't want to work or didn't want to submit to God just lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to go to America. I hear they give away money over there. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell them how they, what they have to do to get it. <laughs> and they come over here. Now all of a sudden you see so many hurting people. And so we have to, we, and so we have to minister to these people, and that's why we have to equip you. So when you come on, come against cases like this, see, see, some people will not be delivered because they don't want to be delivered because they have no intention of change. Not that they don't want change; they have no intention of change. They want. I, I was out on the evangelistic field. And, and I prayed, you know, I was having a prayer line. I just had preached a powerful message. Now the anointing of God was upon me, and the power of God was healing people. And here come this man in the church. He was all bent down with a cane. He, he couldn't even lift his head up, you know, walking with the cane. And, and, and after I got done preaching the message, and I had a prayer line, people lying all across the front of the church for, to be prayed for, and I'm telling you, the power of God just whoop. They fallen out. They fallen out. And I, this man, he was coming up and I was about to finish the whole line by the time he made it up to the front. <laughs> and when he came up to the front, I said, sir, will you be healed when I lay hands on you? And before he could open up his mouth and say, yeah, before he could open his mouth, I popped him on his back. He jumped straight up. Hallelujah. And he was healed. Amen. And he started, he said, I can straighten up. I have no more pain. He was straight. And then I see him about a month later, and he was back like that again. I said, what happened to you? He said, I can't receive. He said, they tried to take my money away from me, so I had to. So it was all about the money that he allowed the enemy to oppress him. It was all about the money. Amen? How many of you know that the money is not worth it? Your help is all you got. Amen. Because, because I'm telling you, 
This, this man, God totally healed this man. But then he went back to that cane because he didn't want to lose that pension. That disability check. He sure did. I know him and his wife. <laughs> Amen. So when God wants God wants to heal our whole body. God wants to heal our whole body. Amen. Many people believe that God can heal, but they believe that Jesus healed the sick 2,000 years ago, but they don't even know that he can do the same thing today. But he wants to. He wants to. Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. There's nothing about him that has ever changed. Amen. And so the power of God was manifested through Jesus Christ to heal every sickness and every disease wherever he went. God's power was available to heal and deliver and to set the captives free. Amen. In Romans chapter 3 and verse Romans chapter 3 and verse 3 and 4 Romans chapter 3 And verse number 3 and 4 said, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a lie. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in, the, in, thy, in, in thy saying. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. Amen. So we can't allow ourselves to be to allow unbelief to judge our actions. We have to understand who God is and what he means to us and what he is to us. He's our everything. Amen. You know, some some I know some I know some people that always somebody they need a sugar daddy or some people want a sugar mama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Richard, you want a sugar mama, huh? Yep. No, you don't need no sugar mama. <laughs> Amen. And they try to make God their sugar daddy. And God is not gonna be nobody's sugar daddy. See, God. He wants you to have what he has, but there's a formula for you to get what he has. Amen. Amen. You see, he wants you to receive your healing. He wants you to walk by faith. He wants you to have everything that he had for you from the, that he had planned for you to receive from the foundation of the world. But you know, you're not going to get it trying to con him. The best con artist won't be able to con God. Right. Hallelujah. You know, and so we have to learn the way to receive from God the way God wants us to see. Because so God has made full provision for, uh, available for us. And we don't have to con him to get it. Amen. God has made full provision available for us for our healing, for the whole person. Not just for, not just for the, uh, you might call it a, a broke arm. Or broke leg. See, I've seen God even heal those things. But this is the outward. This is the outward healing. God is concerned more for your inner healing because if He can get your heart healed, if He can heal you from your deep wound, from the hurt, from the pain of rejection, from the pain of loss or loneliness, if God can heal you in these areas, He can help you to excel, excel in every area of your life. Because you're not running around talking about woe is me. You're not walking around with a sad countenance because you don't have what someone else's have. But you're walking around full of joy because there's peace in your heart. And where there's peace, I'm telling you something, it causes you to rejoice and it causes you to be glad. It causes a merry heart. And what does a merry heart do? It began to release healing throughout your body. Amen. It caused those 
Dolphins. What do you call it? Endorphins. To begin to to begin to uh, flow throughout every area of your body, releasing energy. And this energy is not something from a natural. This energy that's been released is from the supernatural. Because it brings healing in your body. It causes you to, to be healed of the deep hidden wounds that only you and God know about. And he causes those wounds to be covered. You know, he pulled the scabs off, and then he began to massage these wounds with his heart, with his hands, I mean. And as he began to, to massage these wounds with his hands, he began to pour in the oil. The oil of gladness. Then all of a sudden, you be jumping. You be rejoicing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Amen. See, all that God is, he began to work it in you. Because you have yielded to him. Amen. So God has made all provisions. We can't, we can't make him our sugar daddy. Because the provision that he's had provided for us is beyond the natural. Amen. It's a supernatural vision. God never intended for people to know pain, sicknesses, and diseases. This was not, this was not God's plan for man. Sickness and diseases came upon man after man rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden. That's when sin entered into the world. So death by sin, death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Amen? Amen. So every man that entered the earth, well, they're going to experience some because of what happened in the beginning. Yes. Now, I like to say that I was born again before all this stuff happened. You know, before I started experiencing pain in my body. But I was not born again before I started experiencing pain in my body. It was the pain that caused me to run to God. <laughs> Amen. It was the pain of of, 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 of of the drugs and the alcohol and the and the life that I lived that caused me to run to God. Amen. I could not stay in that condition and continue to live as God as as as, as a person in this earth. Because I was headed to a dead end and I was going fast. And I don't want to see you go to that dead end. I want to see you make the change before it's too late. I want to see God do a work in your heart before you come to that dead end. See, God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. Yeah. God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. See, there will I divide him a portion. Look at uh, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Amen. Now, now, first of all, before we go for, for we get to the verse I want to read, we're going to read the, the very familiar passage that we all know so well. Amen. But we're going we're gonna to look at verse number one first. He said, Who hath believed our report? Or to whom are the arm of the Lord is revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground, he had no, he had no form of comeliness. And when he shall see, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It was a, he is despised. No way say verse three. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our face from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his what? Own way. own way. See, so many people are trying to seek their own way instead of the way that God had planned for them. And this is why the enemy has been able to overcome the people. Because they are not yielding to 
the will of God, they'll yield it to their own desires. Amen. That's why he said, verse 1, who shall believe our report? He knows the people is not going to believe. That's why he's letting us, that's why he's telling us this. And what he goes on to verse number 6, he said, and all they like sheep have gone astray, have, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquities of us all. Hallelujah. See, everything that we ever go through, Jesus already have taken that he have already taken it and placed it upon his shoulder. And when he went to the cross of Calvary, he did not leave it on the earth. He took it upon the cross with him. Amen. All your sins, your iniquities, your unforgiveness, your anger, your bitterness, your, your, your selfishness, everything, Jesus, he took it and it was nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we don't have to lie no more. We don't have to steal no more. We don't have to cheat no more. Amen. We don't have to... Glory to God. I ain't going now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But look at verse number 12. Verse number 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was never with the transgressors, transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Glory. Hallelujah. See, we don't know the half that Jesus experienced. To bring us to a place where we can receive God's best. We don't, we, we just know in part. Because we only we only have an understanding in part. But when we begin to come to the revelation knowledge of what He truly has done for us, we can see how much He really loves us. Amen. He loves us so much that He that He He still bearing out sicknesses. He still bears out diseases. And he said he don't want us to bear these things because he's already done it for us. Amen. Surely he bore our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him strictly spirit of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. That's why we need to understand that when we take communion tonight, we are going to experience what Jesus did on the cross. We're going to partake of his broken body. We're going to drink of the blood that was shed. And we're going to experience God's supernatural anointing causing us to be free from the power and the penalty of sin. Because Jesus Christ is on our side. Y'all hear me? Jesus Christ is on our side. And when we understand that, when we see what he has done for us, we will not hold back. We will open up our heart and say, Lord, I understand what you've done. And I know that this communion that I'm taking tonight is to remind me of what you've done for me. It's to remind me of the covenant that you made with us, with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see, what are we doing? We're remembering how he led us, how he led us free from captivity. The blood was applied to the doorposts. When a deaf angel came into the city, Oh, oh my yeah. God. Thank you, See, this communion is more than just communion to me. This communion, when I take communion, it's, I, I, I believe with all my heart that the bread truly is a representation of Jesus' broken body. I believe that. 
Amen. And I believe that when I take of that bread, I'm receiving divine healing in my body. I believe that. And this is one of the reasons why I, I believe that I walk in divine health. This is one reason why sickness uh, don't bother me. Because when I take communion with all my heart, I believe that I'm taking a piece of the body of Jesus Christ. And I understand that. Hallelujah. I understand that. Amen. Amen. And then when I when I take the cup, I know with all my heart that this is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for my sin. And when I take it, I do it with great reverence yes. because I believe that when Jesus Christ shed his blood, it was for my redemption. And when I partake of that blood, it's just as he is directing us to because he said he will not take it up. Not again with us until it be done in heaven. And when we do it here, we say, Lord, I just can't wait till I can do with you in heaven. Mm -hmm. I remember the reason that you shed your blood here on earth. I remember the reason why you was beaten here on earth. And I remember, Lord, all that you have done for us here on earth. But, Lord, I know that one day I'm going to see you in heaven. And I can, and I would be able to acknowledge the the brokenness of your body. I would be able to acknowledge the blood that was poured out on Golgotha Hill. I would begin to acknowledge the crown of thorn that was placed upon your head, and the and the and the forty nine lashes that went across your back. I can understand all that was done, and I can see, Lord, that how you went into the kingdom of darkness. And you took the key from Satan. And you triumphed over him in it. And you made a show of him. And you, oh God, I remember. So you got to come to that place where you believe this word more than anything. Because this word is full of life. And it can set you free. It can heal your body. It can heal your soul. It can heal your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God just not want us to be concerned about our fleshly body. God is concerned about the whole man. The whole man. See, God wants you to believe him for total healing. Total healing. Amen. God, the God that we serve, he is a healing God. From the very beginning of his relationship with the church of Israel, he revealed himself to them to be Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, their healer. Amen. Amen. Healing was a part of his covenant name. Healing, healing is a part of his covenant name that he presented himself to Israel. Yeah. And he presented himself to us the same way. The same way. The same way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Isaac, in the book of Exodus, chapter 15. In the book of Exodus, chapter 15. <clears throat> and I want you to look at verse number 26. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse number, chapter 15, verse number 26. And said, If thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and would do that which is right in his sight, and would give ear unto his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Notice what it said. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. See, there it is. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. See, all we all ye have all ye shall see. Look at uh, uh, chapter. Look at chapter twenty three, verse twenty five. Chapter twenty three, verse twenty five. Chapter twenty three and verse twenty five, and it says, <clears throat> "And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless thy bread." Notice it, and He shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take what? 
sickness away from the midst of thee. You see, you know, I use this prayer a lot of times over my food. Amen. Because it's important, especially when you're going to different countries, that you pray over your food. Because you don't know what you eat a lot of times. <laughs> you might think that you're eating a piece of chicken, you might be eating a dog. <laughs> By wow. <laughs> huh? Yeah, snake. But a lot of people eat snake here in America, though. Yeah, frogs. They eat frogs in America. They eat snakes in America. But I never ate one. You know, alligators. A lot of people eat alligator meat here. You know, I tried it, and it tastes it tastes okay. <laughs> but I never ate no snake. <laughs> I never ate any alligator. I never ate any snake. I never ate any frog. Not that I. I mean, I used to probably. I don't know. <laughs> but the thing about it is that the thing about it, we have to be, we have to be prayed up for everything. We have to be prayed for everything right now because you know because we are in a day right now that the they have terrorists, terrorists, and and we don't know what form or what method they will use to attack. So we have to always pray before we put anything in our system because we don't know if it's been tampered with. Oh, when we buy, we buy by faith because we don't know who fixed it up. We don't know who cut it up. <laughs> we don't know they might even spit on it. <laughs> All done worse. Uh, they got it and pat it out in the floor. <laughs> and then they're going to put it in a plastic wrap mm -hmm. and say it's fresh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of things take place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because, see, when I was in the army, I've seen some things. You know, you know, I've seen people, you know, they drink coffee. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and, I, and uh, this one man, he, he went and spiked up the coffee. <laughs> Big pot of coffee. He spiked it up with cocaine. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was spiked. <laughs> but you see, you don't. You that's why you have to pray about everything. You don't know what's going on. You just have to take for take God at His word and always pray. Always pray. Because, see, just because you are born again, child of God, don't mean that you are exempt from attacks. That's right, that's right. Matter of fact, you're a prime target for an attack. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. You are, you, have, you walk around every day with a big target. You see that big, that red and white target that they have a target? Yeah. You walk around every night, every day with that big target on your back. Amen. <laughs> right. Amen. But God wants us, God wants us to believe for our whole healing, not just our total healing, not just part of our healing, but for our total healing. Yeah. This is what God has wanted for us, our total healing. Amen. And I and now notice what he said in, in uh, verse number 25. Verse number 25 is the one that I is in verse verse number 25 and 26. Let's read them both now. Exodus 25, Exodus uh 20, chapter 20. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, it says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless the bread and thy water, and I will take sickness out of the midst of thee. There, these shall, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days, knows what he said, I will fulfill. I will fulfill. So, see, we have a promise here. We have a promise here. That's why it's so important that we take God serious at what he says to us. Amen? Amen. God wants us to take him serious. Amen. Now, we're going to go ahead on to our communion service now. Because this is time. This is time now that we prepare for 
This is what we made preparation for. It's for the communion. So we're going to go ahead now for our communion. Amen. Huh? Uh, oh, please. Thank you. I want you to turn your Bible to uh, 1 Corinthians and chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And for you that are viewed by the internet, we want you to get your, uh, your juice and your uh, crackers ready for communion with us. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I had to look at verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye do it, as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would, notice what he said, verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Amen. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Lydia, sit down, please. For if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. God want us to examine our hearts because God does not want us to be partakers of the things of this world and thinking that we are going to make it. God has called us to separate ourselves. God has called us to, to uh, present our body as a living sacrifice. When we take of this element, we see here that they are natural elements right now. This is a natural element right now, a natural cracker. But in a few minutes, I'm going to bless these crackers. I'm going to sanctify these crackers by the blessing of the Lord. And this will be no longer a normal, natural cracker. It will be transformed from its common use to a spiritual use, which is the brokenness of the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup, which 
represents the blood of Jesus. Right now, it's just plain juice. But in a minute or so, I'm going to bless this, I'm going to sanctify this, and it's going to be transformed from its common use into a spiritual use where we will look at it as, see how red it is? Now, if you cut yourself, your blood about the same color. So when we drink this, we will perceive it and believe it as it is indeed the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for our redemption. Remember, he took the blood and placed it over the doorpost, and the deaf angel came into town, and they were not touched because the blood was seen. Mm. When we will take of this blood, we are coming in right standing with God that when the enemy comes at us, we are protected, we are covered because of the blood. Our redemption rights as being a partaker of Christ's body has set us free from the dominion of darkness. Hallelujah. And we can experience that full deliverance that Christ has brought for us. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I lift this continent, this bread up before you, Father, as it is truly a representation of your broken body. Father, we thank you that you allowed yourself to be beaten because you didn't have to, but you did for our sake. And because you did it for our sake, Father, we take this moment to remember what you did for us. Before we even knew who we were, you knew us. Before we were formed in our mother's womb, you knew us. And you saw us coming to this place in life. Now, Father, because of your son sacrificed his life and took upon his back the stripes, we remember. And so we bless this bread. Let it be transformed by Jehovah Melchizedek, the Lord our sanctifier, from its common use to its spiritual use. And Father, I bless it now, and I say that it is so, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Now, Father, I release your healing power to flow in this element. That when we partake of this communion, we're not just taking communion, but we're receiving your healing power in the communion. And we thank you in advance for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Father, we take this juice. And we hold it up before you, Father. Now we bless this juice. We sanctify this juice. Jehovah Melchizedek, let it be transformed now from its common use to his spiritual purpose. And now, Father, as it has been transformed, I thank you, Lord God, that as we partake of this, this, this blood, Father, we will see that God has forgiven us of our sins and have cleansed us from all unrighteousness and have placed us at right standing with the Father on high. Oh God, we are redeemed from the curse of the law because of our redemption rights. 
We've been redeemed from poverty. We've been redeemed from sickness. We've been redeemed from spiritual death. For poverty, you have given us wealth. For sickness, you have given us health. And for death, you have given us eternal life. And Father, we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus. So Father, we declare, Jehovah Melchizedek, let this be blessed now. Let this element be blessed now. Let it be transformed from its juice, common use, to the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon Calvary's mountain. Upon Calvary's hill, the place of the skull, which is called Golgotha. And Father, I thank you for it now, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let the let the let the post let the temple curtain be rent now, that we will not partake it because of our flesh, but God, we will rent our hearts. Let our hearts be rent. And not our garments. That when we take of this portion of the element, that we will experience a separation from this natural man and stepping into the realm of the spirit man. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. Put on instrumental music, up, please. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Put it back. Come on. Excuse me. Everybody, bow your head. I want you to examine your hearts right now. And I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that when you take this communion, that your heart is in right standing with God. If there's sin in your life right now, repent and ask God's forgiveness. He's here to forgive you. Father, as we examine our hearts, we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Father. Oh, my Lord and my God, I give you glory. Now, we're going to confess our sins right now, all of us together. We all going to confess our sins together today. Because there's none righteous, no, not one. Say it with me, Lord Jesus. I am a human being. I make mistakes. I do things. I say things that I should say. And I know that I, that I need to ask forgiveness for some of the things I've said. Forgive me, Lord, for I not only sinned against you, but I've sinned against my own soul. Father, if I lied, you know I did. I can't hide it from you. I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. Renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I confess my sins. Today, I rededicate my life to you. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive you now as my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, who was not able to say that prayer with me? Anyone? Did everybody say Because if you was not able to say it, then you're not able to take this communion. Okay? 
thing known as God. This is the body of Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, for your healing, for your deliverance. When you partake of this, you will experience by the power of God healing in your deep inner being. And when you partake of this juice, you're going to know without a shadow of a doubt that no sin that you've ever committed can hold you and stop you from advancing in the kingdom of God. For the blood of Jesus Christ redeems you from your sins. We all going to eat together. This is a body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which will for you. With this, you will receive healing in your body, spirit, soul, and body. The blood that was shared for you will be will enable you to stand in the presence of Almighty God as though you have never seen it. Hallelujah. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was broken for you. Take it. When you partake of this bread, remember. Every sickness and every disease that ever entered to your body, your bloodstream, God's power is going to begin to flow through that with healing and deliverance. This is the this blood is the blood of Jesus Christ that's going to enable you to stand in awesome presence of God as though you have never sinned. And remember, you don't have to sin no more because the blood of Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Are you ready for it? Okay. I can't deny you if you're ready. But the Lord says, this is his body which was broken for you. As you partake of this bread, it's going to send healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In every organ of your body, you're going to experience increase in healing, restoration. From this day forth, this is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you. You will be able to stand in the presence of God because he has paid the price for your faults. Every sin that you've ever committed right now, today, will be washed away. You will stand before God as a holy child from this day forth. I pray in Jesus' name. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. In this there is healing. In this there is the nurture that will bring total peace throughout your body, like you never experienced. And the blood that was shed was for your redemption, you will stand before God holy and pure at heart. And everything that the devil is meant for evil will be turned around for your glory, for his glory. Amen. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So when you eat this bread, you are going to be eating health and killing for all your flesh. It's going to go through your joints. It's going to go through your muscles. It's going to, oh, shiki malala basaya. And you're going to experience increase in strength. This is the blood that was shed for you. As you take this cup, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has prepared this for you, that you will see and know that God is God, and you able to stand in His very presence. Hallelujah. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you take of this bread, the Lord Jesus Christ, His body, everything that He went through, at Pontius Pilate's courtyard 
the beatings, the 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 abuse, the 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 thorns went down upon his head, the pain that he suffered, all the things that he suffered that separated him from from all that he was to experience in his land. God is going to separate you from all the pain and all the sufferings that you have endured. God's mercy and His grace is sufficient, and His healing power will be manifest. This is the blood that was shed for you. As you partake of this cup, the Lord will bring you to a place of remembrance and say, Daughter, I have delivered you. I have redeemed you. I have set you free. Walk in the freedom that I have delivered you. Walk in the liberty that I have set you in. For I am your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you take of this bread, it's going to send healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It's going to send healing to your organs. It's going to send healing to your to your heart. It's going to send healing to your liver, to your kidneys. Ha, she came out of our sire. And you're going to experience a strength rising up within like you never had. And let me tell you something. It's going to send healing to your to your anxieties. This enemy that has been attacking you is no longer going to be able to bind you. Because God's blood right now it's going to bring you into the presence of God like you've never been before. And as you partake of this bread, and as you drink of this cup, you're going to stand before God, and God is going to begin to wash you clean. Everything that the enemy has called to come upon you, to hold you in bondage, God says, Son, as you follow me faithfully and as you honor me, I will bring you to a place of total healing and completeness. I will do this, said the Lord, so trust me. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. Mm. Pastor overcome. Mm. This is a body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who was broken for you. And sister, as you take of this bread, as you remember what the what the Lord has done for the people of Israel when they was coming for the Passover, they were told to eat the lamb of the Passover, and they were told to put the blood over the doorpost, that when the enemy come in, the destroyer come in, that he will not be able to, to defile or to destroy the house of God. When you partake of this bread, you're saying, Lord, I remember what you've done for me. I remember what took place in, in Goshen land, in the land of Goshen. And God, today, I will apply this to my life. And this is the blood right here that God was that, that God used to for the the, the children of you to put up on their doorpost that when the destroyer came in that they were not able to destroy the people of God because God's hand was upon them. And I tell you today that the hand of God is upon you. The hand of God is there to bring you to a place of total peace, total healing, total deliverance from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Every sickness, every disease that the enemy had tried to use to destroy you, God said, today, I'm delivering you, said the Lord. I'm bringing a total peace, a total healing from it within you that you will walk and that you will be able to do the work that I'm calling you to do today. Yeah. Oh, oh shakam Glory. Mm. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Ask the Lord leave. I receive it. I receive it as my healing. I receive it as divine health and healing. I receive it in, in for every organ of my body. I receive it for walking in divine health that no weapon formed against my health will prosper. And I know that my Lord God has delivered me. He has set me free. Therefore, I shall walk in divine health. I receive it. Mm. I received this as the blood that was shed on Calvary when he was pierced, when he was pierced in his side. That blood and the water came out of his body. I received this as the blood of Jesus Christ that have enabled me to stand before a holy God and tell you, my God, my God, my God, I'm standing before God as though I have never sinned. Without a spot of blemish, I've been redeemed from the curse. 
of sickness and disease. I've been redeemed from poverty because of the blood. I don't have to sin no more. You don't have to sin no more. Before I prayed for this, this was just a normal cracker, a piece of bread. Now that I have prayed for it and have sanctified it, it is now a portion of the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you partake of this bread, you are saying, Lord, I remember. I remember the Passover. I remember how you delivered your people. And I remember the healing that you brought amongst your people. That not one came out of Egypt feeble. But they all walked out strong. And I shall be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. As we partake of this bread, we shall receive supernatural strength in every organ of our body. Let's receive by faith. I thank you, Father, that it's entered to my bloodstream now and it's flowing through every organ. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. Divine health and healing is flowing through every organ. It's flowing through every organ in Jesus' name. And in those under the sound of my voice that are taking this communion with us, it is flowing through every organ of their bodies in Jesus' name. I release your healing power now, Father. Mm. I release your healing power now, Father. In Jesus' name. I thank you for your healing power in the communion, Father. I thank you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, where there was stiffness at, now you can start moving. It's in the bloodstream now. It's moving. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Now, Father, we thank you that as we partake of this, this cup of the vine, which is now the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that we are made in to stand in right standing before a holy God as though we have not sinned. Because we have confessed our sin and we know that our sins have been forgiven. Therefore, Father, we stand before you holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. We present our bodies to you. Now, let us receive. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, we are that chosen generation. We are that royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you have called out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, we thank you. We receive that now in Jesus' name. We are your people, the sheep of your pastors, Lord God. God, you have separated us for a purpose and for your use. We receive it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, glory to God. This is real communion. <laughs> glory to God. My God, the power in this communion is so awesome. Amen. Now, Father, I bless these people. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you, Father, that your hand continue to rest upon them. And we give you glory. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you and we glorify you. And we declare that all things work together for good to them that love you, Father. And for those who are called according to your purpose, we bless you and we glorify you now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did y'all receive that tonight? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and take our evening offering now. <sighs> yes, yes, healing God. in the communion. Glory to God. Oh, healing in the communion. That's a that's a good way of putting it, you know. Yeah. Because I believe Amen. that that's exactly what takes place when we do it God's way. 
There's healing in the community. Amen. You you got something to put it on? Okay. Good. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. In Second Corinthians chapter six, uh, chapter nine, verse six. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly should also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully should also reap bountifully. Bountifully, every man according to his every man according to his according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly nor necessity, for God loves which you are forgiven. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, and you always have an all sufficiency in all things. We are bound to every good work. Amen. Did everybody give that one to give? Amen. So let's hold it up before the Lord and bless it. Father, we thank you for this gift of love. We bless this offering, Father. We declare that it is blessed, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. Father, we thank you that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you, what pleases you. So, Father, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord God. I bless your people as they bless you with their tithes and with their offerings. I release that blessing upon them now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I ask you to multiply back into their life the seed that they sown, Lord God. Multiply back into their life, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Let me give back into their bosom because of their obedience to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, we're going to pray for, I know all you here is already saved, but we're going to offer you, if you have a special prayer request, we're going to ask you to come right now before we proceed. If you have a special prayer request, I will pray for you right now. Come on, come on, if you have a special prayer request. Amen, amen. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that what we have experienced today, Father, I ask you, Lord God, to let it be multiplied. Let it be multiplied throughout her body right now in Jesus' name. I release your healing power, Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And everything, God, that the enemy would use for evil, let it be turned around for the glory of the kingdom of God now in Jesus' name. I release the spirit of life, health, and healing over her body now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this dear sister, Lord God. I pray, Father, for this baby and this and this child, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that your hand continually rest upon them, that you would use, that you would move in a supernatural way upon their hearts and upon their lives. Father, let the kingdom of God be made manifest that the will of God may be done in their lives, in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask you to touch this little girl in the name of Jesus like she's never been touched before. And Father, touch this young lady, Father. Let her heart be knitted to yours, Lord God. Father, I just thank you for it right now, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for this dear sister. Lord, let her walk in divine health and healing. And may she begin to acknowledge you, Father, in every area of her life as Lord and Savior. We thank you, we bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man, Edward. God, I ask you for the work that you've begun in his heart, that you will continue to work, Lord God. I thank you, Father, today marks a day of new beginning for him. I thank you for that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Every force that have worked against his heart and his mind, the blood of Jesus Christ covers him right now 
And God, I thank you, Father, for supernatural intervention in his life with signs, wonders, and miracles to bring him to that place of total peace within. I thank you, Father, that no demon will be able to hold him in bondage from this day forward. I call this man free from every demonic influence now in Jesus' name. And I release your anointing, Father, to lift burdens and destroy yokes. And I give you glory and praise for what you're going to do from this day forward in his heart and in his mind in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Then let us all stand. Let's go home. Don't forget about the picnic on next on, on, the, on the tent, which is Saturday. We're going to be down in uh, William, Palm, uh, William Palm Park, right down off at the end of Arden Way. At the end of Arden Way, William Palm Park. We're going to meet there Saturday morning about 10 o'clock. That'll be a good time. By 10 o'clock Saturday morning, we're going to meet there in the park. That's when we'll start arriving. But uh, I'm going to try to get there a little bit and start getting the uh, equipment and everything set up. Amen. But I want you to come and expect miracles, signs, and wonders in the people's heart that's going to be running back and forth through the park. I want you to be in agreement with me that God's going to touch these people. Then they're going to be drawn under the, the place where we are ministering. Amen. That's why we're going to take the sound system so it'll be heard. Amen. And I'm going to need help carry these chairs and put them on the truck so we can have chairs out there in the park. The metal chairs. Yeah. Okay. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in our lives and our hearts. We thank you, Father, that all things do work together for good. For them that love you, Father, and for those who are called according to your purpose. Father, I thank you for what you've done in our hearts in this communion. I thank you, Lord God, that we are walking in the full strength of your word. Because, God, you have declared that he that the Son set free is free indeed. And we are not walking in bondage to the enemy, but we are walking in the liberty of thy word. And, God, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. I bless your people. I thank you, Lord God, that every need in their lives is met. I come against every demonic force of anxiety, uh, things that try to push and try to cause them to, to do things, Father, that, is, that, that you're not in. I come against every demonic spirit right now that will try to compel them to, to say things that is not true, Lord God. I release it from this assignment now that the kingdom of God may be manifest in their lives. In Jesus' name, God bless you, and we'll see you on those who come to prayer tomorrow morning, 8.30. Amen. God bless you. We love y'all. Have a great day. And school of ministry on Tuesday. Amen. Don't forget. God bless you. Bye-bye. That's the brothers. You came twice today. <laughs> Where is it? Right over here? Okay. Yeah, but. And your daughter, huh? Yes. Okay. That's good. And you know, she was like, Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Amen. Amen. This is communion. Yeah. You've got to have your communion. Yeah. Yes, communion is very important. Amen.
So we see how it's going to work, but we speak double languages at home. Dr. Rokhans is very Russian at home. Oh, yeah, he, you know, he repeats whatever I repeat. <laughs> and certain degree, yeah. obligations, Father, that she must take care of from a legal standpoint, from a natural, Father, that the supernatural will be able to work on her, on her behalf, bring about your desire in her life. God, I release her right now into your hand. I commend angels being camped around about her. And if need to, they will manifest themselves to help her, to aid her in the quest of, the, of her. And she's not trying to accomplish now, God, because she wants to move in her heart that her life is right with you. That's all she's out for. Her. She's not out for her no one. She just wants to make sure that her heart is right with you. And that the her that the good she's not working against the laws of the land. Because when it gets along the land, there's no blessing in that. So, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to help her to make the right choices right now in this situation. And help her children to understand what she's doing. And God, just guard her heart. Guard her heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, anyway, you, you heard we do have a meeting next Saturday. And now we do still continue to go right now. Our meeting is at 7 the Amen. Amen. No, it's still with the Morris. Amen. 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 God is doing something, huh? And how we have to overcome them. And so it's a very interesting subject. Mm -hmm. And it's not only with the Morris. I'm just like, you know, if you be in a neighborhood. I thought about at least getting those good yeah. God is good. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. So I'm happy for the God is doing it. God is doing it. Yes. He's cleaning them up. He's cleaning them up. You are welcome. Thank you for coming to church. No, I got to thank you. To you and to the God. We the blessing. Because yeah. We coming. Amen. Everything else is a waste of time. Yes. He's still know. cleaning me up. Yeah, I <laughs> Daily. Is, you know. He's cleaning all of us up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. I want to thank all of you for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. And I pray that you had that you enjoyed taking communion with us and and that you are walking in the strength of God's word. Praise God for you. I thank God that all of you are being so blessed because Jesus Christ is Lord of your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you all next time. Bye-bye.